I just saw a few minutes ago, Daniel Thomas expected to re-sign with the Jacksonville Jaguars, according to Ian Rappaport. Uh, you know, really a, a special teams ace for them, one of those core guys. If you talk to a lot of the special teams players, and you never know this until you talk to other players, like maybe it's, it's Logan Cook or somebody else that's on special teams, and they're like, this dude's like, maybe the best in the league or one of the best in the league. The Jacks feel like they have that in Daniel Thomas. He also can play safety and has had to jump in there, especially with Rayshon Jenkins out. This move maybe makes some sense. You got Wingard, you got Thomas, you got a couple veteran guys, certainly capable, also good special teams guys. He broke his forearm, which is a really weird injury to have in a game. I at least haven't seen too many of those, yeah. but he broke that, uh, I think, in December amongst the injury list of the Jaguars that kept piling up. So, Daniel Thomas uh, coming back to Jacksonville, according to Ian Rappaport. Yeah, and obviously breaking news from Ian Rappaport saying that uh, it's going to provide depth for Jacksonville. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah? Was was that the plan? Uh, I think you that know? is the plan. No, I mean, yeah. It, I think, it, listen, you, you got to maintain some of your guys. Brent, like you said, some of your pillars. He has a special teams ace. And it, it can kind of go um, – underappreciated sometime from from the casual fan, right? Like, I remember with Montel Owens, I mean, yeah. one of the best special teams guys I ever played with, you know, I don't think he got a lot of love sometimes just because, you know, you kind of get lost in the sauce on punt return or, or pump block or whatever the case may be. But um, you need those guys. And it's really rare in, the, in this league, Brent, that you can find a guy who can do all four things. You know, we talk about punt, punt return, um, kick off, kick return, who can do all four things and do them well. And if you have one of those guys, you keep those guys. Because, number one, obviously you need them for leaders in terms of special teams. But also, it helps to have a jack, it helps to have a jack of all trades then because then it makes your roster a little more better for construction. Yeah, you know, listen, I think, uh, I think all those things you just said are right. I think special teams is important. I like when the Jags are – they lost a football game on special teams this year, which was – a weird thing because they are actually pretty good on special teams, but they lost a football game because of the return kick and some other things against the Houston Texans in week three. Like, there's a lot of reasons, CJ Stroud, other things. They actually lost that game because of special teams. And man, they were awful. They had a block field goal, they had the return. I mean, they were Let's not talking about in that, that again, game. huh? <laughs> uh, but the Jags also lost later in the year. You could make the claim on special. Now, they lost this one for a lot of reasons against Cincinnati. But, you know, McManus misses the big kick against Cincinnati. They would have won that game. They'd be in the playoffs. You know, all that stuff. So special teams, certainly we know its value. We don't have to talk you into that. But you're not going to get star value there. What I look at this now, Austin, and, and again, I think there's so much – negative conversation right now about the roster and about the Jags and the direction. And I can't fully buy all that negativity. Like I, this isn't me just being sunshine and rainbows. I saw a lot of folks say he's defending bulky. No, I'm not really defending bulky. I'm just trying to say it is what it is. The Jags do have some good football players in areas. They have holes. They don't have holes all over the field. We have seen holes in Jacksonville. They've got some decent players in spots. Now, do they have enough blue chippers? Again, there are all many levels of conversation here. But for this conversation with Daniel Thomas coming back, I actually think, and you don't have to agree with me here, that the Jags are pretty good at safety. I like Andre Sisco as a free safety. I actually think mm -hmm. Antonio Johnson is a nice replacement and going to be a pretty good player in the National Football League. I think he probably will take a little bit of time to get used to an everyday player at that spot. But I like the upside there a lot. And then you have Andrew Wingard, who is very reliable. And has become very reliable, not just on special teams, but jumping in there as a third safety set or a fill-in role. I don't feel like you feel bad when he enters the game. I think there was a time where people felt bad, but I don't think you do now. And then Daniel Thomas has actually had a little run at safety, but more so as a special teams. You know, we look at holes on this football team. I would say safety is not one of them. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily call it a hole because obviously cornerback, I think, is more of the pressing need right now. Interior defensive line is more of the pressing need right now. But that's not to say you can't upgrade. At the safety position, like, yeah, I, I get that Cisco is going to be locked in. He, he'll be the starter going forward. Antonio Johnson, like you said, will probably be the guy, but he still has to get some experience, right? It could be a, a, a slow learning curve. So we don't know how Antonio Johnson is going to handle the full workload. So if that's the case, there could be room to upgrade. Uh, I'm not saying it's, it's a pressing need. I'm not saying it's a hole. But if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, you got to make improvements, and making improvements is upgrading said talent. And upgrading said talent could happen at the safety spot. I want to talk about this a little bit. This is, this is a fascinating part of the conversation for me because I look at this, and, and I can be, you can be guilty of this. You know these guys. You feel like, hey, I'm comfortable here, and I like what you're saying. You should always be trying to upgrade anything, anything. <laughs> when you're trying to win big, when you're trying to win a Super Bowl, you're always trying to upgrade. Fully understand it. But like, I would actually sit here and say, 
the Jags are all set at safety for 2024. Like, I, I get the idea of upgrading, but where are you going to put them? Like, where's the upgrade? Wingard is a good backup safety in the National Football League, I think, from a depth standpoint. But are you confident when he starts? Well, the idea for him is not to start. Okay. But, but I'm, I'm fine s- if he had to for a pinch hit game or two, yeah. Listen, injuries happen, though. W- Wingard got a lot of starting reps last year. How did you feel about him starting? I didn't mind it when he was in. I okay. know you could upgrade that spot. I'm, I'm not, but my point is, you can, can you find a better safety than Antonio Johnson right now? Well, yes, you could. But you're invested in him and his future and him playing, right? Like, you're not going to do that, I don't think. Unless you just land on something. Like, there's no first, second, third, fourth round pick that you're going to dra- go get safety to try to replace Antonio Johnson, who you might already have. There's nobody in free agency that you're going to go say, hey, let's upgrade right now safety. We don't feel so good. We actually let. As they sit right now, like, they're not even looking at safety. No, they're imagine. not. But I'm saying, would you rather have Jamal Adams right now, Antonio Johnson? Take a look at it. I mean, that, that, take a look at this. That's interesting. The safety market is nuts. That's a good call right there, Hamby. Foyer released yesterday. Um, Justin Simmons released about an hour ago. Really? Simmons? Man, man, they went after him hard, I think. uh, Denver kept him. Remember that year? It was a couple years back. How did Simmons play in Denver after that? Like, did he play to the contract? I thought he did, but it's like once again, it's Denver. Denver, Yeah. Yep. Uh, Duggar, they put that uh, transition tag on him in New England. Which, I don't. So the transition tag, basically, if a team wants to pay. Well, Top they, dollar, they can match it, right? It, or how does that work? Uh, they can match and draft picks, and then yes, the team, the team that has him can match. Okay, basically like the Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson got put under this one too, right? Like, hey, if you want to throw something out there, we can match. Gotcha. Type okay. deal, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, Xavier McKinney is very good. Okay, well, this is a great. This is really good, guys. And this is uh, this is what we're talking about. And I think you can get lost. And listen, I love. If you could go get one of these guys and move Antonio Johnson to the nickel spot, sure. would you think about doing that? Well, yeah. I mean, I think if you see the hallmark of, of any great defense in the NFL, they have a dominant safety. And I think right now in Jacksonville, like, yeah, Cisco has shown some things. Would I call him dominant? No. Would I call Antonio Johnson dominant yet? It's too early to tell. He very well could be. But if you have a chance to get a dominant safety, yes, that only bolsters your defense. Do you like what you saw out of uh, Antonio Johnson in the nickel? I know we kind of classified him as a safety the other day, but as I look, I like this list that you brought up, man, because if you – let's just take a Jordan Poyer, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he's a little long in the tooth. Obviously, the Bills – we'll talk about that a little bit later. They cut a lot of guys. Well, um, yeah, they had to – I mean, a Poyer, get below the Hyde. cap. Like, these are names that you know. I, see, <laughs> if you want some edge, by the way, you can get Gardner Johnson. Uh, he might be too edgy uh, for some. Or take your Jamal – you know, just – Obviously, we're looking at the strong safety spot, I think, in this kind of conversation. Yeah. Yep. So you got to find your strong safety that you like. And by the way, the strong safety, free safeties, there's a lot of flexibility in those spots nowadays in the NFL, too. But would you grab somebody on this list from a veteran standpoint that you could still get for a couple more years and then move Antonio Johnson and solidify your nickel spot? Could you, act, could you do that here in Jacksonville and take care of two needs with one move? You could, but once again, it's going to be a situation where I think Antonio Johnson's better actually suited at the safety spot just with his size and everything, and you know he's a pretty physical player. Yeah. So I would probably keep him at safety. You could, you could fill him in at nickel and see how it goes, but I would definitely have a backup plan at nickel just in case because nickel's so, it's so important now. Well, they you do know, have backup have... plans. I mean, they got Gregory Jr. They've got guys. They've got actual and, – and maybe you would still was, draft one. Right? Oh, that's what I was get. leading towards, my, yes. My guess is you're still – like, look what we saw with Darius Williams and others. I, I like what you just said there. I think people are better suited for certain spots, but there's so much position versatility. And this is different, by the way, than trying a guy in a spot that he might fit because he's got talent. There are There's true versatility now – in the safety positions, and some of these corners that actually can go inside or outside. Like, you know, Darius Williams was not playing bad on the inside when they were asking him to do that. Yeah. Even though he was – wait, it felt like he was better off on the outside. He was more accustomed. But he actually was doing a fine job. They just needed to get him to the outside because uh, of the whole Shaq Griffin debacle at the time. And, of course, he performed better on the outside anyway. So my, my point is you can still go draft corner and get your corners, and they're going to probably give you a pretty good sense of versatility that can stick them on the inside if need be. Yeah, I mean, you got a guy like McKinney who I feel like kind of goes unnoticed because, you know, 
Giants weren't really doing anything um, in terms of their defense, but like he was a kind of a staple in their defense for a while. So there's definitely some upgrades there. Could it be the right price? Once again, I don't think it's the most pressing need right now, but there is a lot large market for it, right? So if you have a large market like you have right here, uh, you could probably get one of these guys at a pretty good discount. These what? guys. Oh, go ahead. Let me ask you this. So you kind of have two separate kind of categories here. You have like the guys like with McKinney, Duggar, uh, Cameron Curl. Um, those guys are like 24 years old, those three, and young, talented, and obviously they'll be looking for multi-year deals. And then you kind of have guys like, you know, C.J. Gardner, Johnson. Well, he's – okay, let's take uh, Jamal Adams. I know Poyer's up there, 31 or 32. Hyde, I think is too. Hyde. So – Even Whitehead might be a little older now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you were uh, – of uh, Eddie Jackson, who's more of a corner. I and think. Rayshon fits in this, but you're obviously not bringing right. him back. So would you if, – if we were to address the position, would you rather spend more money and get the McKinney, Duggar, Curl, 24 years old for a four-year, five-year deal? Or are you kind of looking at that veteran, Poyer, uh, Adams, where it's like a two-year deal – you know, come in until Antonio Johnson is is fully ready to, you know, take off. Yeah, I mean, to me, like, I would probably lean towards more of the, the Adams. I mean, once again, I don't know if Adams even really wants to play anymore, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, he kind of had a falling out in Seattle. But there's some other guys up there as well. I would probably lean more towards getting the veteran because, like, once again, you can develop Antonio um, Johnson a little more if you have to. Or, heaven forbid, he actually takes over the starting spot because, he's you know, he's outplaying a veteran. But I would probably take the veteran here just because, Hamby, like, in my opinion, this roster needs more veteran experience, right? You, you just lost Darius Williams. Dude won a Super Bowl, right? Dude's been at the, at the pinnacle of uh, the NFL in terms of knowing what it takes to get to a Super Bowl. A lot of these guys on this team, how, how, how many Super Bowl winners do we have? Or I guess participants – do we have on this team now? Uh, that's a good question. I haven't done that in a bit. Uh, Doug. <laughs> yeah, Doug. <laughs> Some of the coaching staff. Uh, shoot, off the top of my head. Uh, they're so young on Foye, no. Uh, if you go like a Roy Robertson Harris, no. Um, you go in the back end. I mean, I would say nobody on defense, unless it's like a, it might be like a special teams guy somewhere in there. Yeah. Offensively, Sheriff's your old guy, but he never he did never anything was. like that. And then you got Zay and Kirk, uh, no. Um, so I don't think you so, have, I mean, you might not have any. And once again, I'm I don't not think sure. you have any. Okay. So, and I'm not sure. And I don't know like how rare that is. I remember the teams that I played on, there was at least one guy. It's usually a guy. You know, and he's usually a leader, spoiler alert. And I still believe like Malik Jackson coming in here after he had won yeah. helped pave the way for, hey, this is what it's supposed to. I agree with you on that. I, I don't think you have to just go ring chasing no. <laughs> to get guys, but I do think it's a valuable thing of here's what it takes to do that. And the Jags have plenty of veterans, but they know what it takes. I think you can make the case last year they didn't know what it took to play a first place schedule and also be the hunted. They mm-hmm. loved having the, they had a bunch of chip on the shoulder guys that loved being doubted. And they were great in that spot. They even admitted to being great in that spot. They weren't great being hunted. Yeah. And so I think you're right there. If you can kind of grab somebody that knows what it looks like, that could be very valuable. And you know, I don't think I mean, I don't know how many p- people on this list, too, here to answer the question actually have been in a Super Bowl or played in a Super Bowl. But, like, I see a guy like Geno Stone, who's a guy who came, comes from Baltimore, who's got a pretty, you know, pretty in terms of his background. Day. Yeah, he, I think he started his first start last year. But, you know, they always move those safety sets. I mean, they have a slew of safeties that they move around. Um, I think he could be an interesting guy coming from a culture in Baltimore where I think they're all about defense. They know how to play quality defense. So if you can't find – a Super Bowl competitor here that's played in one before, then you try to look to, like, okay, which guy has come from some pretty storied defenses, some pretty respectful organizations, and Geno Stone would be an example of that. 